everyone, this is LB3 and I am back again with another draft video. This video is part of a series where I will take a look at the top matchups between draft prospects in college football week by week. In this video we will be taking a look at the top matchups between draft prospects in week 5 of the 2019 college football season. This will be a weekly series so if you think there's someone I missed let me know in the comments. And if there's someone specific you'd like to see next week, also put that in the comments. All right, everyone, it is time to take a look at our first matchup of the video, and we are starting off strong with Chase Claypool versus Bryce Hall. Hall is one of the top cornerbacks in the country, is, and Claypool is a rising receiver who is off to a very strong start in 2019. Hall is a zone corner who doesn't press much, and Claypool is a big receiver who has nice size and decent athleticism. It will be interesting how willing to be physical Hall will be, and how he will deal with playing against a larger receiver like Claypool. Hall has the potential to be one of the top cornerbacks in the class, and he needs to be dominant every time he's matched up against draft-eligible wide receivers. Claypool is part of a very crowded wide receiver class who hopes to rise and become one of the top receivers. And performing against top talent is a good way to do just that. Playing on a top team, Claypool is guaranteed to face off against some other tough matchups, but Hall needs to be sure to take every opportunity he can to stand out. The second matchup that we are going to be taking a look at is Jacob Eason versus USC's defense. Eason has had a very good start to the season, however he still has a lot of flaws and those were very apparent when he played against Cal early in the season and struggled mightily, both because of his team letting him down and just how he played throughout. When playing against inferior competition, good draft prospects should look dominant, which so far this season, this season Eason definitely has done, playing against some not great opponents with Washington and absolutely dominating them. However, good prospects also have to perform well against teams with similar amounts of talent or even more talent than their team. Eason so far has not done that, but he has a chance to do that again against USC. This could be a game that future evaluators point to either in a positive or negative light when talking about their evaluation of him, so it's imperative that he performs well in this game. Uh, some things I like to see him clean up, so I really like to see him work on his touch. Uh, there are some times when he really could throw with more touch and he just still rockets it in. And also, I'd like to see him work on his decision making overall. I just feel that uh, what, if, from what I've seen, sometimes he does not make the best choice. Our third matchup is another fun one and another wide receiver matchup. Uh, you'll soon see again that this uh, week seems to be the week of the wide receiver matchups, but this one is. K.J. Hill versus Lamar Jackson. Obviously, we had Lamar Jackson in a previous matchup video, and I thought he performed fairly well against LaVisca Chenault. I still need to go back and watch it again, but from initial viewing, I thought he did pretty well. Uh, in this matchup, while Chris Olave seems to be the favorite target of Justin Fields, K.J. Hill is a very good player in his own right. He's a receiver with very good hands and athleticism. Hill has good potential, potential to be a top wide receiver in this draft class, and if he falls, he'll be a steal for an NFL team. Jackson will have his hands full, and if he can shut down the Ohio State wide receivers that he is matched up with, that would be very good for his draft stock, as Ohio State has a very good wide receiver group and a good quarterback in Justin Fields. So this is a big test for Lamar Jackson. The fourth matchup that we are going to be taking a look at is a bit of a sleeper quarterback prospect in Washington State quarterback Anthony Gordon. Uh, Gordon so far has been putting up video game numbers, including his most recent nine touchdown performance against UCLA, even though he ended up losing. Now he's set to face off against a very talented Utah secondary that will be the first time he has tested this season. This is his chance to not only prove himself as a Heisman contender, but also prove himself as an NFL draft prospect. Unlike the last two Washington State quarterbacks and Gardner Minshew and Luke Falk, who I thought had weak arm strength and didn't have quite enough for the NFL, Anthony Gordon seems to have more than enough, and I think that he has more pro potential than either of the two that come before him. He has some great flash throws and seems to process well, but it will be nice to see him against a team that can cover well and actually get some pressure, as in the games that I have seen, he's had all day to throw and some wide open receivers to throw to in some of those matchups. If Gordon can continue to improve and show his arm strength and willingness to take shots down the field, NFL teams will have no choice but to take a look at him. The fifth and final matchup that we will be taking a look at is, as promised, another wide receiver, and it is Arizona State wide receiver Brandon Ayuk. Cal has multiple draftable players in their secondary, and Ayuk will have his hands full trying to score against them and the entire Arizona State passing offense. 
But if any wide receiver on their team is going to succeed against Cal in their talented secondary, it's Ayuk. He's extremely versatile after the catch and very hard to take down. On top of that, he is a very a underrated route runner and has the ability to separate with both speed and physicality. He was overshadowed by Neil Keel Harry, but now free of his shadow, he is balling out. Seeing him perform against the talented Cal secondary could help him start to get noticed by draft evaluators across, across the country. While it is a bit much to say he could end up going higher than Harry right now, he has a unique skill set of his own that could get him drafted very high come May. Alright, those are the top five matchups that I'll be keeping an eye on in week five of college football. If Charlie Heck ends up playing, I encourage people to watch him as he will have a very tough matchup against Clemson, but he is a very good player who can end up climbing in the draft, and especially if he's able to play through injury this week and perform well. If I missed another good matchup, don't hesitate to comment, and I'll be sure to check it out. I'll be doing these videos weekly throughout the season, so if there are any matchups you definitely want me to highlight in week six, don't hesitate to comment those either. I always love to hear feedback and have some good draft conversations. If you like this video, then definitely subscribe as I'll have a lot more draft content coming to this channel throughout the college football season, and then after that, all the way up until the draft. This has been LB3. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Peace.